What's up, military millionaires? Today, you are going to talk with me about the five indicators of a real estate crash so that you can avoid losing your ass in a recession. Now, as always, please make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when future videos come out. And if you'd like to gently tap that little like button in the corner, if you learned something from this, I'd really appreciate it. In the beginning of 2020, people quickly began speculating that a real estate crash was inevitable. In fact, they've been speculating for like two or three years now. A lot of indicators of a real estate crash, but this year hasn't really signaled a hard crash yet, in my opinion, according to the book that I've been reading about all this. Now, in this article, we're gonna talk through the five indicators of a real estate crash in your local market. These are not macro factors and not all inclusive as there can always be outside factors like in 2008, when the mortgage industry just created a disaster. Generally speaking, these five market indicators will be able to help you predict when you're at the peak of a market cycle and the bottom. By studying these five indicators in your local market, you will be able to predict when the real estate cycle is going to change directions. And ultimately, the better you're able to predict these cycles, the more money you can make as an investor. Keep in mind that every market in the nation is different, and these are local indicators. These are data points, and these data points are extremely helpful in understanding what your local market will do in the future. That being said, these are just indicators, not a crystal ball. So always do your due diligence and don't come back at me, bro, if you miss you know, a market because nobody's really perfect, nobody can predict, right? This is just a way to predict, right? Existing home sales. The first indicator of a real estate crash is current existing home sales. The law of supply and demand drives most econ economic markets, and this is especially true with real estate. If there are more homes on the market than there are buyers, the market slows down and homes start sitting on the market for a longer period of time. As home sales slow down, buyers are able to offer less money and prices start to decline. If there are way more houses on the market than there is demand, then they are deemed less valuable. Now, if there are less homes on the market than there are buyers and the market speeds up and homes start flying off the shelf much faster as home sales speed up, sellers are able to demand more money for their homes and buyers begin to create a bidding war amongst themselves. So if there are less homes on the market than there is demand, they increase in value. One more time, more houses supply for sale than buyers demand equals less valuable real estate. In real estate, this is referred to as the buyer's market. Now, less houses supply for sale than buyer's demand equals more valuable real estate. And this is referred to as a seller's market. You should pay attention to the days on market, DOM, metric in your local area and determine whether or not it's heating up or cooling off. The second indicator is builder's permits. So there are a couple reasons that builder permits are a good indicator of a real estate crash. The construction industry is one of the largest industries in the nation. The construction industry is booming, that means employment is high and the economy is doing well. But for another thing, developers pay a lot of attention to the supply and demand of a market, and when developers stop developing, builders stop pulling builders permits. And the real estate market begins to slow down. And when the real estate market is hot, Builders are pulling more permits, and when the market begins to slow down, permits will be pulled less frequently, right? So pay attention to how many builders' permits are being pulled year over year and quarter by quarter, and you can track this information through your local county records just to make sure you're staying on top and understanding if people are pulling more permits and building more houses or if it's slowing down. Number three is mortgage defaults. Mortgage defaults are an important indicator of market crashes for two primary reasons. One, raising mortgage defaults can be followed by raising foreclosures, which you know leads to more issues in the real estate market. And also, mortgage defaults are they're also an indicator of the overall health of the economy. If employment is if unemployment is rising, people are unable to afford their mortgages, it's probably a sign of a coming trouble in the broader economy. When you fail to make your mortgage payments, the bank can put your loan in default status. This can happen immediately after you miss your payment or months later, depending on your loan terms and the state laws. Now, after your mortgage ends up in a default status, you'll either need to catch up on payments quickly or the bank can foreclose on your property, which leads us into the next indicator of a pending market crash, number four, foreclosures. Now, foreclosures were made popular by the 2008 real estate crash. This crash was caused in a large part because banks were leading, lending money to people who shouldn't have qualified for them. And foreclosures occur, occur when a homeowner or borrower 
goes into default on their mortgage and is unable to catch up on payments. In this situation, the bank may be forced to foreclose on the mortgage and repossess the home. Now, nobody wins when the bank needs to foreclose on a property for several reasons. Usually, this happens when the homeowners can't sell the house for more than the remaining mortgage amount, and if they could, they would just sell it instead of going through a foreclosure process. Also, the bank doesn't want to own your home and will most likely turn around and sell it as quickly as possible in order to get it off their balance sheets. So pay attention to rising foreclosure rates because they usually predict a market downturn. More foreclosures will increase the supply of housing and lower the value of homes around them. All right, the fifth indicator is interest rates. Interest rates are a great indicator of the amount of money people will be able to borrow. As interest rates rise, homeowners will be able to borrow less money. And as interest rates drop, homeowners will be able to borrow more money, right? So therefore, the lower interest rates uh, drop, the more money homes will be able to sell for. As people are able to pay more uh, for a house, prices will continue to rise. Likewise, when interest rates increase, homeowners will be able to afford less than they would have when interest rates were compressed low. There is one caveat, though, to interest rates, and that's it, it, it is important to note Interest rates are not recognized per this system as a determining factor in which way the market will go. Instead, they act as an accelerator or decelerator for whichever direction it is already headed. For example, if a home sales and building permits are high with minimal defaults and foreclosures, and meaning the market's trending upwards, it's most likely going to continue increasing in value. If interest rates drop, then the market will rise even faster. But if interest rates increase, then the market will still rise just a little bit slower. Likewise, if the market's trending downward, dropping interest rates will slow the drop, but probably not stop it. And rising interest rates will accelerate the downward trend. So for this reason, I don't view interest rates necessarily as the end all be all of market cycles. They are very helpful to keep your eye on. All right, so indicators tell you what, not why. But all you really care about is what. So in case that wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be, let's break it down a little. If the five indicators discussed all signal that the market's about to drop, it may not give you any clue as to why they're signaling that way. And ultimately, you don't need to play detective and try to figure out why the market's signaling a crash. You just need to know that it is. Also, these indicators don't mean an immediate correction. They just signal that it may be coming in the near future. Also, it's possible that some indicators will pop up and then correct themselves, but if all of these indicators line up to signal a change in market cycle, you would do well to pay attention, right? So these were the indicators of a real estate crash. Now, to be clear, these indicators are not guarantee that a market crash or rise is coming. They're simply indicators that you can and should probably track in your local market in order to stay ahead of the market cycle. Now, I promise you that I would much rather be anticipating a crash before it happens than not anticipating a crash until it's too late. The indicators of a real estate crash discussed in this video are taken from the book, Timing the Real Estate Market, The Campbell Method, which I am currently reading. Uh, I got to hear Robert Campbell speak at the North San Diego Real Estate Investor Association, a, a meetup in San Diego County that I attend and earlier this year, and I found what he had to say really intriguing and it was very interesting to me, so I bought his book and I'm going through it right now. So these are those indicators. Hope you got something out of this. Some good stuff to keep your tab, keep, tab, keep tabs on. I'm gonna leave all that in here. Have a great day, make sure you subscribe.